Don't move. Drop the gun. Put your hands up. Or this bomb will go off. Okay, okay. Whatever you say. Move early. No extra moves. You made it easy for us, Mr. Lawson. It is not possible to escape from here. My friends have surrounded here. Remove any movement from your brain. Go straight to the car. Bill. Mr. Lawson is also our guest. You are very lucky, Samson. That damned criminal had a bomb strapped to her waist. Hey Lawson, not a girl. He can't have gone anywhere, he's not on the street. Let's go search the shop. Apparently we can't find anything useful here. It wasn't here either. We are both very tired. We better go, the police are guarding the shop. Samson, I didn't have a chance to tell you about it. About 20 days ago, McStard, the head of the International Police Department, informed me. To carry out the mission, I must be under the command of Howard the head of the counterintelligence organization. Howard gave me a file to study. This one was so weird and so exciting that it totally caught my attention. An attractive and extremely beautiful girl cooperated with me in this mission. Her name was Candace, and she had been employed by the counterintelligence agency since she was 18. And she was only 20. In the contents of the file, it was mentioned that an agent named Edward was going to Macau for vacation. The field that Macau is a resort island and the center of gold and pearl smuggling and the center of world trade. From Hong Kong, you can go to this island in two hours by speedboat. One night, Edward has insomnia. He comes out of his hotel and watches the sea from the top of the hill overlooking the sea. At this time, he feels that signals are sent from the same hill with light to the sea. Since Edward was an American counterintelligence agent, his curiosity is piqued and cautiously approaches the place where they sent a signal to the sea. He sees a man signaling with a flashlight. Edward waits there in wait for a long time. When the man's mission is over, he chases her. The man returns to the hotel and goes to his room. But Edward cannot forget this incident. But because he didn't have proof of that man, he waited until morning. The next day around noon, the man leaves the hotel. Edward chases him. The man gets on a boat and goes to Hong Kong. Edward chases her in the same boat that was a passenger boat. After arriving in Hong Kong, the man enters a temple. To his surprise, he sees the man kneeling in front of a huge Buddha statue. Edward pulls himself behind a pillar and looks at the man carefully. The man lights a candle and places it in a large candlestick in front of the Buddha statue. Edward swore in his report that he saw it with his own eyes. As soon as the candle was placed in the candlestick, the eyes of the great golden Buddha moved in their sockets.
and a very shocking sound that would frighten anyone came out of the mouth of the Buddha statue. An unintelligible and amazing voice A voice that seems to come from the land of the dead. After that, a big fat man appears from the corner of the Buddha temple. Mang, what does Mang mean? In Southeast Asia, those who dedicate their lives to the Buddha's path are called Mang. They are a kind of priests who shave their head and eyebrows. Their only clothing is an orange cloth that they wrap around their bodies. They are so similar and they walk so slowly and their movements are so slow that no one can tell them apart. So Mang is a local name. Yeah. Anyway, Edward sees a Mang appear from the corner of the temple and slowly approaches the man. 